Good afternoon, this is Speak On It. My name is Malik. And tonight, we have a full program. Some of you always say the plate got more on it than the stomach can howl. And maybe so, maybe my eyes is bigger than my gut. But I want to try to get to most of this information. But before I do, I need to just say this here. Brother Amari is in there trying to get these videos back. I got a lot of them. And we're going to do something a little different tonight. We're going to try to tie in some things. Because subliminally, we need to understand the game that's being played consciously or unconsciously by the powers that be. And whether you're a Negro or something else, if you don't pay attention, you get swept up. There was something in the news the other day. And I'm going to just show it to you here as I run my mouth. I don't know this boy here. That headline up there, I heard it. When it was out at the airport, private airport, private plane. Boy appeared to have a seizure. And they called the special people when they came. And the Fed was there, Homeland Security was there, all type of people was there. Young boy was the entertainer, rapper. From out in South Suburbs, I ain't gonna call his name because I ain't got time for that foolishness. You see what it says up here? Accidentally overdosed because they just finished the autopsy. And they found that he had some of these substances we've been talking about in his system. But one of the first things they did is they let us know that he might have swallowed these pills because he didn't want them to be discovered by the authorities. The authorities found guns that his bodyguards had on the plane. They found probably more dope than they should have. It sounded like it was more dope than personal use, but I ain't gonna get into that because he's, he's, you know, he was a star. So they figured he had a great future ahead of him. He was struggling, but they said most of his songs had something to do with drugs in them. And the truth of the matter is, at this point, no one has claimed the paraphernalia on the plane. But something that I thought serious to share with you is this. When the responders got in, first responders, they administered Narcan. He, later he died, but Narcan, that's what they do when you OD. Now, we know it's an approximate, but everybody called it Narcan. So, even with this young man here, first thing they did, the people were saying a seizure, but the first responders used Narcan. Now, this young boy had given an interview, and he was saying that he was trying to handle his dope thing and woo-woo and he wanted to be here and da 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 woo woo he ain't here now. He ain't here now because of a situation. But I want to say this to y'all and that is like I said before Retro Current Team is an intergenerational task force of elders and others groups, age groups and what we try to do is explore issues Retro, when you course, have type back in the back a little bit. Current, of course, right now a little bit. Working together to address issues, solve problems. And we are working in collaboration with the Westside Heron Opioid Task Force. Something that LaShawn Ford put into place 2016 because so many people died in his district. Over overdose, Heron, opioids, fentanyl. All type of stuff. But tonight we're going to talk about some other things in addition to that. And one of the things I want to say is this before we get started. If any of this information resonates with you because someone in your house or you know somebody that's struggling or challenged with situations, call the Westside Heron Opioid Task Force. Man over there, the person over Outreach, the director of outreach is Lou Sires, Mr. Lou Sires. His number is 
378-4195. His email is Westside Task Force at Yahoo.com. Westside Task Force at Yahoo.com. I'm giving you this information now and I'm going to give it to you again because we're going to be running fast. We have knocking. I got some. But I don't expect to be shooting nobody in the arm or in the behind. But I got it just in case while I'm standing on my post in Community Watch, Safe Passage. Somebody is laying in a situation and they just need Narcan, the antidote, to bring them out of that dope death zone. As Reverend Jackson say, keep hope alive. Narcan can help you stay alive. It's an antidote. And we want people to get it because too many people are dying unnecessarily. So much for that. Now, brother, show us that piece where they're saying that in, in Tennessee, they got a situation where Met just, just, just done took over. You know, Tennessee, they got a lot of them. Them, 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 them white folk are down there, boy. They buy poor as Negroes. And now they too poor to do reefer. Too poor to do crack. So poor that they just doing meth. The cheapest thing they got. And y'all know how a person look to do meth. And we had a situation last week when we talked about these two white boys caught out in South Chicago. 76 and exchange. These two white boys had over $100,000 worth of meth in their vehicle. Ten pipes. Several guns. Got popped. They say that in Chicago, meth ain't a big issue. But it could be. And we have to take very seriously that if a group of people have come all the way from Houston, Texas, with $100,000 worth of meth, they went not your ride. They was dealing with something that might be about to become nationwide. And one of the things we want you to look at and one of the things we want you to understand is how we need to pay attention. Because what MET does, it, it, it creates another distraction. But now we're going to just run through some videos. we got a video here that deal with... A baby that, that that these people man they was doing met the baby. Pennsylvania State Police are filing charges now against two teenage girls who allowed a two-year-old boy to inhale from a vaping device while they were babysitting him. And we want to warn you, this video is disturbing. <laughs> Sound. Police say the incident happened Thursday at a home in St. Clair Township, Westmoreland County. Investigators say the teens recorded this whole thing and posted it to their Snapchat. The 18-year-old and 17-year-old girl could now face child endangerment charges. Police say other than the coughing, the child gratefully did not display any other visible effects of inhaling from that device. The girl's names have not yet been released. All right, we're going to run this other video for you. This one dealing with Met. They're dealing with a kid again. Well, no, this one here. And I just play them the way you get to them. Don't worry about it. Y'all just look. You'll catch it. And I'll explain as we get closer to the end of the show. Yes, sir, bro. A late night delivery. Police in North Carolina say the man was delivering to an apartment complex in East Charlotte late Monday night when four people approached him, pointing what appeared to be an assault rifle at his head. CBS affiliate WBTV reports the driver pulled out his own pistol and fired at the suspects, who then fled. Police found all four of them. The three injured are expected to be okay. Of them, a 15 and 16 year old will be charged as juveniles. A 18 and 20 year old are facing the same charges, but as adults. Investigators later determined the gun the four used to try and rob the driver wasn't really a gun, but a toy rifle painted to look real. Katie Johnston for CBS Local News. Now, let me let me do this right quick before we go to this next video, because these are connected, but they don't really fit right into the dope thing, but since this is commentary, we can do all of this, and we're going to do all of this. But there's another piece from the Chicago area. Now here, stick up, man. Go stick up the delivery man, 
Delivery man killed them. Good. Need to be more of that. Killed them. Now you say, well, that's cold. No, it ain't cold. You came with a toy and the man sent you behind the hell. And the rest of them that didn't die, they going to jail. That's good. The same thing happened here the other day, almost. Over there in Garfield. Here's a dude going to stick up the dope boys on the corner. But dude hanging in the alley. So when they slide up on the dope boys on the corner, dude in the alley kill one of them and shoot up the rest of them. Good again. That's what I'm saying. Every upright citizen should be allowed to have a gun without any type of permit. Because these creatures out here need to know that their life is at risk. Just like the one that they thought was a prey. So these are two situations happening almost on the same day in different areas. But you see the outcome. You tried to do wrong. And you got snatched. Now I know you got a little family out here and you looking and you stalking. You better take it. You better take your butt on somewhere and keep it moving. And mind your business. Stop messing with people. Stop blaming the drugs. Get you some help or get some Narcan. But trying to stick up people and just take people's stuff, people ain't going, even the dope man. Now I understand we got to call him. Call him. Speak on it. Good evening, Dr. Malik. Well, how you doing, I'm sir? take things in a little bit of a different direction. Now uh, the city and state and places is selling marijuana. Mm -hmm. I, I have been saying this on other shows. Uh, I won't be surprised in the next eight or ten years the state will be selling heroin. And they're talking about in terms of closing up the budget. It may not be the right thing to do. And I have said, how many times you have heard me say this before? There's money in other people's misery. And it's all about money. Look how many things the state took away. There was lottery when in the black community we call it policy. Look at other states where there's prostitution is illegal uh, in some other states, but in Nevada it's legal. When you look at a lot of things that was illegal, it's legal because why? The state and other places can make money off of people missing. Now, you brought up about meth. In those southern states, it get into the environment, getting into the streams where the snakes and frogs and crocodiles are being affected. Now, that's how bad it is in some of those states. Now, if I'm lying about anything, stop me dead in my tracks, whatever. You're right, me in terms of Norcan, because if the state started making heroin legal, guess what? We may really have a problem. Well, you know... We talked about this last week, and we, 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 we told you already there's one of the states, I don't remember right off the top, where they are actually giving heroin two or three times a week uh, to those that has that challenge. Now, it don't right. take long for it to slide in here. Now, what we want to do is go to this piece uh, in Detroit. What was that? On January the 23rd, where the chief of police is saying how this weed situation is creating a serious, serious challenge as it relates to the black market because these folk cannot really afford the dispensary prices. And as a result of that, people with guns and all this other can on, the dope boy got the gun and, and the person that's, that's buying it got the gun and we're going to just let you listen to what this uh, person has to say and think about Chicago, right behind Detroit. You're his biggest... Well, it looks like these commercials are still here, but I ain't going to deal with that. I'm going to just say this here while we're looking at this. Now, one of the things I want you to understand is this here. Detroit is just a spit away. And Detroit, Michigan, I'm going to just say Michigan. They uh they're gonna show you something here. We better watch this. Man, I y'all watch this here. This might be here. And so what's, what's the deal? deal? Good question. But the deal is marijuana is expensive at government licensed dispensaries because of the taxes, the cost of testing, and the brick and mortar costs of doing business. But chief, because marijuana is legal, is there a black market in Detroit? The black market in Detroit is thriving. 
because black market weed is cheaper than licensed weed and pot sellers make buying black market weed easy. It's called dial a dope where the pot seller just drives to the buyer. But that's the problem and more disturbing, violent crime is up, the chief says, because of black market pot sales. Violence. We're talking about buyers and sellers both armed. And the chief says often the buyers and sellers in a drug transaction get into a gunfight and therefore recent shootings and homicides are up. We are estimating, and it's a rough estimate, but pretty close, probably 60 percent. 60 percent. Our gang shootings and group shootings are down. 60 percent of shootings are related to pot? We think. And without getting into details of a specific plan, the chief doesn't want to tip off pot dealers, Detroit police will focus on the armed buyers and armed sellers. It's not legal to sell in the black market. That's not legal. But our focus is beyond that. It's the associated violence. And remember, being convicted of a felony with a gun is an automatic two years in prison. We're going to arrest you. In Detroit, Charlie Langton, Fox 2 News. Now let me just say this while we're finding this other piece. This other piece is going to, going to let you hear about this poor baby that died, uh, what was that, on the 20th, on January the 20th. This poor baby it was a shame. But it happens. But as it relates to what's happening in Detroit, you know, when you put that film all on that on, on that marijuana, or you lace it with rat poison, you do all these things, I just hope these daggone politicians remember what's happening in Detroit. And just like they got knocking to deal with heroin and opioids, in a minute, they're going to need something to deal with what's going to be the result of the rush for money at the expense of a new substance, met, all of this stuff gonna roll into one ball. It's gonna be crazy as hell. Anyway, let's look at this because I think you need to just pay attention. The probable cause affidavit says when 36 year old Ashley Rands called first responders to this address, she blamed herself for rolling over her baby while asleep. However, investigators found out that wasn't the reason the baby died. The cause and manner of death were determined by the forensic pathologist, and uh, he determined that the infant died of acute methamphetamine intoxication, and the manner of death was homicide. The autopsy happened the day after the infant died, showing both amphetamine and methamphetamine in the baby's system. The affidavit says Rands only admitted to using marijuana and she was aware there was a possibility of transferring the drug to her child through breastfeeding. Only after the autopsy came out did she admit to being on meth only two days before the infant's death. Napier says while both charges are still under investigation, these types of accidents can be prevented. Every year we get those cases where people fall asleep uh, with the, um, an infant in their arms in a chair or in bed or somehow end up asphyxiating an otherwise healthy child yeah. just from unsafe practices. Yeah. Rands is currently in custody at the Marshall County Jail. Now, let me say this. See, I know traditionally you are accustomed to Hotline 21 just being agency people sitting here talking about their services. Well, what LaShawn Ford said is that he wanted some of the people in his district to help in a awareness campaign and that's what this is this is non-profit PSA type information now I'm just a little different and I like more than just talking I think that the visual reinforcement of these videos help you understand how tragic it is just think for a minute think had these people had some knocking that baby might be alive. But had the parent had enough sense to understand that they was putting the kid at risk, had they been conscious enough, the baby might have not went out like that. And one of the things we want folks to understand is that we know 
Many people have situations in their home, but people can get help. You can call Westside Heron Opioid Task Force at 773-378-4195, Lucias. Email Westside Task Force at yahoo.com. And the truth of the matter is, they will be able to direct you to help. It's important. You got some of the Ottomans now are buying into working with the Westside Heron Opioid Task Force because they see the importance right in their war. And I salute the Sean Ford for having the foresight back in 2016 to do something other than watch. All right, Carla, speak on it. All right, Carla. Well, apparently the call ain't there, and that's all right. So one last piece I want to show you here that seem a little bit far-fetched, but it ain't. Because here's a dude here riding around high on weed. What was that, 122? Yeah, that, that was on the 22nd. Here's a dude riding around, I don't know where he thought he was at. This dude here had an accident. You know, about driving while intoxicated. Check when you see the piece what they did to him. Because he was driving under the influence. Not it wasn't alcohol, but it was still a type of intoxication. And a lot of people have been driving high for years. I was at a school today, and I'm going to tell you the truth, just really pissed me off. That's the word I'm going to use. This boy come to school at the end of the day with one of them little infinities that, you know, a spark kid will have, one of them baseball caps, loud ghetto music. But when he opened the door, that loud reefer stank hit. Do you know this boy went into the school? I want to know, CPS, why in the hell do you let kids Come to school, reeking with dope. Why do you enable these kids? You smell it. People standing out on their posts, smell it. The whole community smell it. And yet, a kid can get out of his car, come into the school, stinking like a factory. No consequence. So now what you're doing is changing the, the norm in society. Where these kids grow up thinking that it's okay to stink up and smoke dope. And we grown folks just sit back and allow it. Well, see what happened to this dude here that was driving and had that accident. A fiery head-on crash in Lyle Monday night. Police say it happened when the driver of this Pontiac G6 crossed into the opposite lane of travel while on Route 53 near Main Street. The driver, identified as 20-year-old Cole Dixon of Wheaton, is believed to have been under the influence of cannabis. Impaired driving is impaired driving. We understand that cannabis is now legal. However, impaired driving after ingesting cannabis is, is not legal. Three weeks into the legalization of marijuana in Illinois, the accident highlights a concern many police departments have regarding people's understanding of the law. First off, we'll start with the age, and the driver was 20 years old. So in order to have legal cannabis, you must be 21 years old. To possess it and transport it, it has to be in a container, which would be odorless, sealed tight within your vehicle. In South Suburban Park Forest, police are taking a different approach to ensuring its residents putting together this parody Cheech and Chong video. <laughs> it's cool, man. Hey, you, you want some? It's legal now. <laughs> the real-life consequences of driving under the influence of cannabis are no laughing matter, however. AAA says over the course of a month, 15 million Americans will drive within an hour of using marijuana. They are twice as likely to be involved in a crash. There's the period where you feel high, obviously you shouldn't drive during that period, but even after the subjective feeling of the high wears off, there's still deficits in memory and reaction time and retention. As for that accident last night, police tell us that because the driver is under the legal age, he is being charged with unlawful possession, as well as driving under the influence of cannabis. Are you now, because you I'm going to tell you something. I, 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 I find it so interesting to believe that the adults are so 
irresponsible that they would rather go for the money and let these people blow their life. Back in the day, it was a war between alcohol and marijuana, and now marijuana is coming back, and I think at the end of the day, it's going to probably be as big of a problem as alcohol. Not to mention, like in Tennessee, it's already over with because they use it met because they think they something other than humans. Until next week, I see the caller, but we got to get out of here. There's somebody else is up. Till next week, we out.